Hey everybody, welcome to this episode that I'm going to call Long Distance Lisa. Um, you all know that at the end of my uh, videos there is my email address and some people actually send me emails and uh, Lisa is the one that sent me an email and she had some questions for me. Now, Lisa is with us right now. Say hi, Lisa. Hi, everybody. There you go. So Lisa is a real person. What Lisa did was she emailed me some questions that I thought were great questions. So I decided we're going to do a little collaboration. So Lisa, do you have your first question for us? Yeah, I do. My first question is the floating bridges you use. Where do you get them? You mean a floating bridge? like this uh, rosewood like this rosewood floating bridge any of you that I, i'm not loading up customer links and and things like that or or trying to sell anything here so anybody that sends me an email and references a floating bridge in the uh subject line i will send you a link to where i get these i actually get two of these for about ten dollars to the door and i'll be happy to share that with you you always want to remember when you see a little eye pop up right up here if you click on that there's going to be some information and the first one that's going to pop up today is a link to the video i did about floating bridges if you haven't seen that so lisa anything more about floating bridges yeah Yeah, and, and let me show you why. Do I sink this down into the box? Do I cut a hole in the box? Well, I used to do that. Um, and then one day it just dawned on me. This part right here is, look at that. It's as thick as the box cover, almost exactly. So by sinking it down in here, what was happening is underneath uh, the box lid, I've got this. Yeah, and if you're interested in this and grounding and all that, I got a video on that and uh, tension pins and stuff, and I'll, I'll put a link to that. But what basically was happening is you would have this. So this is riding over the edges. Uh, I don't know that that did anything. I used to cut these off here at these down slopes. But anyway, in the end, it just dawned on me. I'm going through a lot of effort here, and I'm messing up a lot of my graphic just to absolutely gain nothing. And so when I started putting these in, it just made a lot of sense to me. And you can see on this box that I'm building right now, um, it's just really simple. Uh, yeah, I did a video on uh, putting piezos on uh, right underneath uh, the floating bridge. When I was using that other way of doing it, that wasn't really possible. There was a lot going on under the cover. So this is why... I went with that, Lisa. Okay, so that's it on the bridge. Um, Lisa, do you have another question? Yeah, I had a question about um, the size so the size of the bolt that you use for a nut. And how do you figure out how deep the groove for your nut should be to get the correct string height? Okay, again, let's take a look at that at the bench and we'll get that question answered for you. We've seen this set up on some of my guitars where you've got this bolt with these two pieces on here which again are just lamp hardware so you go to your hardware store you go to all them bins that pull out and you tell them you want these and you find these I like these they're aesthetic but they don't work on everything and let me show you the difference this is a 25 and a half inch scale fingerboard it's got the slots cut uh, and this little slot right here is for the knot. So when I uh, want to use one of those uh, bolts, I just basically uh, take this and pop the wood out of there like so. I'm using a putty knife here. You see how cleanly that come out. And then this just sits 
left-handed is one way, right-handed is another. You basically run this up until you don't you don't want this sticking out and snagging anybody right here. But then you run this other one down and you tighten it up good. Okay? Like so. And you might want to put a little Loctite on there or something, but it stays, but it just sits in there and the strings come over and hold it down. Now, if you have a neck that doesn't have a slot like that in the fingerboard, uh, that doesn't work out so well. In that case, you would use a bone, a piece of bone like this, or maybe a piece of hardwood. You would cut to where it needs to be. Now, a little trick here. When I uh, I'll string these up after I get this on, I'll make sure I know where my strings are going to be. And then I just take a Sharpie and go like this over that. That's why those black marks are there. And then when I loosen the string up, there's going to be a mark that doesn't have any Sharpie on it. And I take this file, this fine file out of a set of small files. It's triangular. And then I just file a groove in there. And I would do the same thing with the bone or the wood knot uh, on the other setup. So your filing lasts for uh, the thinner string and more for the deeper string. So you do a little bit of work here with the file and you'll get your string height right. So Lisa, did we uh, cover it good enough for you on this, this bolt and these uh, uh, lampshade knots that go on the end of the bolt? So are we good there? Yes. Okay. Um, you you add. I saw in your video that you added an extra piece of wood to the neck for stability and notching out a pickup. My question is: is how long is that extra piece of wood? I mean, do you have it extend through the box to the end of the pail to the end of the tail piece? And at the other end. How much do you leave for the heel beyond the end of the box? Is it like one inch or two inches? And then how do you shape your heel? Okay, we'll take a look at a couple of examples here that will help us understand that. The next question Lisa had was about uh, building thickness on the neck and basically putting this other board here. I need you to understand that first off, this is my first guitar. The first is the worst. Have you heard that? Look at look at the action there. I mean, I could drive a semi truck underneath that. Um, the matchbooks are really cool, um, but it, a fatal error on this one is the neck and the box lid are the exact same height. The only cool thing about this one, the only redeeming thing about this one is, yeah, C6 Steve signed that one. Ooh, there too. But you see here, I've got this notched out to route this out so it will receive a box that thick, a, a lid that thick, so I can get this down to where my string height can be where I need it to be. So when I start cutting uh, this much out of here, this thing is already going to bow uh, if I put a big thumper string on it. When I start getting into 50 and 56 and 60 strings like this one, this is just going to pull back into itself. So you do need the support. Now the question about how long this is actually has everything to do with your scale. So if you're doing a 25 and a half scale guitar, you want to know where your bridge is going to sit. And then that right there, this is the end of the box. Uh, this is where it nests into here, and um, we, we had a question about that. We'll get to in a second. But anyway, you're going to want to have a couple of inches right here past where the box uh, ends. And so you basically take your wood, you know where your scale line is, if that's where your scale line is, uh, you put the wood like this. This is an old piece of scrap. You just line them up like that. You glue them and clamp them. And then this part where it sticks out of the box, you could rasp this. You could look, leave it like this. I've, that gives you a rustic look. You could embed some gadget down in here. Um, let's say you were doing a railroad themed guitar, those old nails 
that have a date on them. You could drive something like that in there. You could put uh, some type of embellishment or you just basically round them off like this on a belt sand or something like that. But it gives you a lot of strength here. And then doubling it up also, when you start to put pickups in and coils and have to cut down into this, again, if you're running a single layer of wood like this, this thing's gonna snap like a toothpick. I want to show you the inside of this one really quick. You see uh, the neck, the fingerboard is sticking up above the box. It, that way, the lid, it gives me room to work with. And then that coil sits down a little bit further. Uh, I can adjust it with these screws. But on the inside, you'll see there that I had to cut into the neck and I actually reinforced this part of it here. Okay, Lisa, let's move on. So uh, uh, part of that, that is aesthetic. Uh, my older guitars, the ones that I built earlier, that fretboard ended right at uh, where, where the start of the box was. Uh, I didn't have to notch out the box or figure out anything there. So it, uh, uh, when I started extending the fingerboard over, there's of course more frets available to the person playing the guitar. Uh, and plus, I'll show you here on the bench in a second. You hide a lot of uh, seams and things like that and notches and things by, by doing it that way. But, but let's have a closer look at one of my earlier guitars. And then, in fact, the one I'm building right now, and I'll show you how that works. I used to end my fingerboards right there. Um, the problem is I don't like the way it looks. I take a couple frets away for those guys that like to slide way down in here and make things scream and want uh, uh, the visual and the fret to do that with. Um, also, this connection point right here, that's not pretty. Uh, and, and so when you take your all that where the cut is here and all that, when you notch out the top of your box where it nests into there, it's going to look a lot better. And you see that route mark uh, is the thickness of the the lid right there. And I've drawn a line where this is going to go. You see that the scale line matches up and the, and the cut where the box ends. And this will nest down and it will drop down. Uh, so uh, the fingerboard is above the uh, uh, plenty so it gives me enough uh, action where I can keep my string height low for the artists that like to be uh, to take the slide off and actually do guitar work and now the last thing Lisa asked was how much do you let this uh, come out of the end of the box is that necessary no it's not necessary you could find some other way to do your strings I like to do my strings here you remember that mock-up we did in the video how to ground your neck where we did this with the tension pins. Of course, I had to, I'm going to have to notch this out here. So those tension pins, so it ends up where string keepers are right there. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's some aesthetic choices to make here. I am actually going to put a piece of something memorabilia right here on this one. All right, Lisa, I think that we've covered... Uh, the questions that you had in your email. Is there anything else that you can think of that might be a good topic for another episode that we could do? Um, actually, yeah. It would be really nice to see something on how you make your headstocks. And, you know, to go a little bit deeper into the headstocks, you know, do, do you angle it? Do you, do, do you add pieces to make it wider? You know, how, just, just, just general information about the headstock. Okay, well, we'll keep that one in mind. Um, Lisa, I appreciate you uh, doing this collaboration with me, uh, and 
your help. I, I love your questions. They're basic questions that I think everybody needs to know. Um, remember that I just evolved this myself. I'm one of those people that's too stubborn to want to know what everybody else is doing. So I get down the road sometimes on my guitars and think, man, I should have done this different. But you've watched me progress from uh, doing my way and the errors and mistakes that come. And this is kind of about learning. So uh, let's close out with uh, this. We've got a surprise for Lisa. She's been a good sport. Lisa's going to get one of my Camacho boxes. Uh, inside is going to be, that's right, a floating bridge. Uh, the nut set up. Uh, thank you, Lisa, for helping me out with this episode. All right, Lisa, we'll see you later. All righty then. That's the end of this episode, Long Distance Lisa. I got to get back to work. I got a guitar to put together. Again, this one's going to be really cool. There's a story behind it. I appreciate you watching my channel. I appreciate you subscribing. Remember, when you subscribe, uh, your phone gets a notice that says, hey, I've got another video up. Um, as always, feel free to email me. I appreciate your likes and your comments. Uh, last shout out to Lisa. Everybody give Lisa a big hand. I can't hear you. Still can't hear you.